Hi, this is Vince Ray with uh, HBK Hottinger Rolling Care, and today I'm going to talk about the BSR metric. BSR stands for buzz, squeak, and rattle, which is basically an estimate on how people can perceive nonlinearities in a speaker speaker system. So let's say if you have a lot of distortion, you know, um, the question is, can you, as a human being, can we perceive that distortion, right? Distortion can can go very high, but sometimes you know it's it doesn't mean that uh, you know it's because you have a high distortion number that you will be able to perceive it with your own ears. So this is why BSR um, is very useful because it will tell you if distortion is a problem or not a problem. So BSR is calculated um, using two type of stimulus, and today I'm going to cover the swept sign test. So I'm going to do a lock sweep. And I'm going to show you some of the preference here. So under my swept sign test, um, I'm going to do a closed loop test, right? The headphone, uh, it's an analog headphone, and I'm testing an EL8 from ODs, which has been a great headphone, very robust. Um, but I must say, I've been using the headphones for multiple years now, and I beat it up uh, like, like you cannot imagine. So there's some interesting thing to measure here. Um, and um, I'm going to uh, do a, I'm going to save the impulse response. Uh, so using this linear deconvolution, uh, this Farinat test method, and I'm going to scale it, um, the impulse response such a way that I will have 10, 1024 samples, which will be good enough for, for me. Um, I'm going to calculate uh, BSR. Um, so the unit is in zones because it uses time varying loudness. So it's a most advanced metric we have that, you know, um, it's, you know, a, a metric that really correlates well with the human perception, uh, taking into account frequency masking, time masking. So it's, it's a very advanced um, calculation here. And then I'm going to calculate THD, total harmonic distortion, using those harmonics. And I'm going to calculate rub and buzz using those harmonics. My stimulus will... Um, will have a constant amplitude, but what I want here is to reach 105 dB at one kilohertz. So 105 dB is my target value, basically. And I'm gonna sweep from 50 Hertz to 20 kilohertz using a lock sweep. And uh, my sweep time will be only five seconds. Okay, so I'm gonna apply that. So uh, what I'm doing here is I, um, this little uh, GUI app uh, is a demo app I put together in bb.net. You can use Python, you can use MATLAB. And basically, uh, it used the Electroacoustic E Engine API. And uh, so there's a lot of, uh, um, um, you know, command exchange between my demo app and the AP and the E Engine. But the point here is the Electroacoustic Engine does all the data collection and all the data crunching, so you don't have to do anything. Uh, this demo app just plot data on the screen, and that's all, right? So I'm ready to go here. Uh, I'm going to click Start. I'm going to shut my mic for my mouth for five seconds, and we'll talk about the uh, the results. Good. So we got the uh, the response uh, of the left ear. Frequency response, left ear, right ear. You can see that it's, a, it's an open back, clearly. Uh, there's not a lot of bass. Uh, there's some little weaknesses around 7 kilohertz. It's a little more pronounced on the right headphone cup. Um, you know, but um, this is a typical um, EL8 response, or my EL8 response after five years of usage. Um, and But look at THD. Uh, THD goes up to 3.5% around 7 kilohertz here. So 7 kilohertz as a fundamental frequency, the harmonic 2 will be around 14 kilohertz, right? So, you, I, you know, typically you would be able to hear that, you know. And THD, you know, again, 3.5% um, is quite, quite high for this quality headphone. And um, in my uh, right headphone cap, you know, I uh, reach, uh, you know, something around 1%. Um, so I'm going to skip also the rub and buzz uh, for now. But look at the impulse response. Pretty good looking impulse response here. You can see this is a, uh, a an open back headphone. There's not a lot of reflections. You know, it looks very clean. And uh, here we go. Here's the BSR uh, metric in zones. 
you know, that's the unit of uh, time varying loudness. So it's sounds versus frequency. And uh, we got some values uh, below, what, 300 hertz, right? And nothing after. Well, what, what it tells us here that, um, uh, first of all, the, the peak we have in the THD around 7 kilohertz here, um, um, BSR tells me that I cannot hear it. You know, this is not something that a human being can perceive at all. And uh, again, THD doesn't necessarily correlate very well with the human um, subjective impression. And, um, you know, BSR tells me that here. Um, so there's nothing, nothing we can perceive um, above 300 hertz. There's still some, some stuff we can perceive in the lower frequencies, but I think it's the fact that um, the set phone is an open back, right? So, you know, it's, I'm in my office here, so it's a very noisy environment. I've got my laptop running with a fan, you know, uh, let, let's say at three feet from my, my headphone, uh, headphone cap. So, you know, it's, it's probably due to the, um, to the acoustic and the, the ambient noise here, uh, which is not very well controlled in my office, but that's something you can certainly, if you have a chamber, uh, that will, um, you know, will certainly help. But the bottom line here is, um, you know, be careful when calculating THD because, you know, you may flag that THD on the production line and can say, Hey, this, 3.5% is not acceptable, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, after, you know, after, or when using the BSR, it tells me that, you know, uh, there's no issues, you know, people won't be able to perceive any issues, uh, THD issues, at least on that given headphone, right? So we are now entering this, this uh, um, phase uh, where we have more and more human metric, you know, sound quality metric, also called psychoacoustic metric. Um, and they're, they're really useful because it's not because you measured a high THD um, and did the math correctly, right? That, um, uh, that you can predict that uh, people can, can perceive, you know, distortion. You know, THD doesn't correlate well with the human's subjective impression. So that was my talk today. I hope, um, you know, you, you, will, you learn something. If you have any questions, feel free to call me, uh, I'm available uh, anytime. Thank you. Bye-bye.